We're on our way to an abandoned facility I found on Google Earth. I couldn't find a single reference to anything about what this place originally was, but we're gonna do some urban exploring and investigate until we solve the mystery. I've got my friend Caleb here coming with us to check it out. Say hi, Caleb. Wait, do you even know if this place is abandoned? <sighs> yes, it is. Come on, just play along. I don't wanna have to do a lot of editing. Whatever, man. I don't care about your video. The whole idea is dumb. It's not dumb. You're just scared. Shut up. I'm not scared. I'm just tired of walking. Wah, wah, wah. You can stop crying then. Because we're already here. Wait, really? Yeah, man. Check it out. Whoa. What is this place doing out here? Nothing anymore. It's abandoned, obviously. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, too. I don't think anybody's here, so let's go check out the inside. Uh, hey, wait up, man. I, I don't know if this is a good idea. Man up, bro. It's just a building. It's not gonna be haunted or anything. I've done this kind of thing before. But you don't even know what this place was used for, or what could be in there. Not yet. And I won't know unless I mess around and find out. No way. I I'm not doing that. I'm gonna step on a nail or something. <sighs> Dude, who cares? Let's go. No, dude, I'm serious. I'm sorry, but I changed my mind. I, I want to go back. <laughs> Come on, really? Now that we're all the way out here, you want to go back? Why? I've just I've got a bad feeling about that place. <sighs> Fine, you don't have to go in. We'll go back, but first I gotta go in there and find a toilet to crap in. What? Just wait. <sighs> I'm serious, man. I ate a bunch of burgers and had like three Grimace shakes today. I gotta go. Are you crazy? Do you want to die a gruesome death? You're literally begging for something bad to happen to you tonight. Why don't you crap in the woods and get ambushed by a badger up my butt? Not a chance. You're either coming with me or you're waiting out here until I do my business, bro. Or you can walk home by yourself. There's no way I'm gonna go inside some dark, abandoned death trap just so I can watch you blow up a toilet that doesn't even flush anymore. <laughs> you're funny, but you're a coward, bro. Just wait out here if you're too much of a wuss to get in on this. Fine, just don't get hurt in there, because then I'll have to come save you. Psh, like that's gonna happen. Alright guys, update. Caleb was too scared to go inside the awesome and mysterious abandoned building. So now, this is a solo mission. Dun dun dun! It's time to search for a bathroom inside this vault of intrigue. I can't see a thing in here. There we go. Now, let's take a little gander here. Huh, looks like some sort of lobby. It's actually not too bad in here. I also thought this place would be more open. Oh well, there's gotta be a bathroom around here somewhere. Probably down this hallway. Ugh, it's not so nice down here. It smells kinda rancid. Check out this graffiti though. What's that say? Skibbity? Skibbity? What's that mean? Somebody wrote it over and over again. It must have been crazy or just uncreative. Oh, looks like somebody was living here for at least a little while. I hope they're still not around. Oh, God, the smell is getting worse. How could anyone sleep in a place like this? This amount of mold is not healthy. Look, there's cockroaches coming out of the pillow. Ew. Ah! Whoa. Holy crap, guys. A rat just ran over my foot and it was huge. <laughs> Good thing I'm wearing boots, right? Oh, boy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button, you guys. And ring that bell if you want to watch my next vid as soon as it comes out. <sighs> okay. Where's that bathroom? It's gotta be here somewhere. If it's not, I'm gonna crap my pants for real. There's another squatter bed. Where did he go to the bathroom? And what's the deal with this skibbity graffiti? Guys, I have no idea what that means, but look, it it's everywhere now. All of the walls, the floor, even the ceiling. And it's all red. I hope that's not what I think it is. I gotta be honest, you guys, I I'm really scared right now. I'm just trying to hold it in, but I'm starting to waddle. Uh <gasps> Finally! Oh my god, I'm saved! It's all over in here, too. And there's only one stall. Wait. Skibbity. Skibbity. No way, guys! Somebody's in there! I, I have to wait for them to get out! Oh, oh, Jesus! Where's the light? Damn it! No luck at all! Oh man, I can't wait! I just can't! I don't have a choice! I gotta ask the guy to let me in, but listen to what he's saying! He's the guy who wrote all that stuff! 
Hey man, can you hurry up in there? I, I really gotta go. Hello? Skibbity! Ah! Skibbity! 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 No, no, skibbity! No! Skibbity! 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 Please, skibbity! Don't leave me skibbity. alone! Where are you? Skibbity! Skibbity! Hello? Skibbity! Pete? Is that you? Skibbity! 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 Ah! The Skibbity Toilet Trend has been blowing up on the internet, but all I see are memories of what really happened to me back when I was a teenager. I was friends with these two guys from school named Josh and Kyle. I didn't know either of them very well. We were just friends due to the proximity more than anything else. All three of us lived fairly close to one another and were in a lot of the same classes. One night, I was heading over to Kyle's house for a sleepover. Josh and I were invited over to Kyle's house for the weekend. I was pretty excited to just chill and take a break from school for a couple of days. Plus, his parents were apparently going to be out of town so we had the place to ourselves. I got to Kyle's house a little late. I'd had some homework to finish up first. When I got there, Kyle answered the door almost immediately. I apologized for being late, but he told me it was no problem and waved me inside. When I went in, I was surprised to see that Josh was nowhere to be seen. It seemed kind of odd because Josh was usually right on time. Then I noticed his shoes in the foyer. There was no mistaking them as the guy's feet were several sizes smaller than mine or Kyle's. And Kyle didn't have any siblings. I asked if Josh was in another room. But Kyle just said that Josh was running late and would probably come over later. It all seemed pretty strange to me. But I shrugged it off and Kyle and I got on with the sleepover. Later on... We had been watching TV in the living room with the lights off for a few hours, and Josh still hadn't shown up. I couldn't stop thinking about it for some reason. It didn't make any sense. I had spoken to Josh earlier that day and he hadn't said anything about being that late. In fact, he said that he had made sure to finish up his homework yesterday so that he wouldn't have to worry about it. I had the scariest feeling that he had to be in the house already. Why Kyle wasn't telling me the truth about Josh's whereabouts was beyond me. I was honestly scared as hell to ask as I didn't know what Kyle would do to me. For all I knew there was something really dumb <gasps> going on. What was even more unsettling was that I kept hearing a noise at random points throughout the night. It sounded like someone was saying skibbity over and over again from a distance. It would come and go every few minutes, never lasting for that long, but it was consistent. After it had happened a few times, I asked Kyle what it was. He said something vague about his dad using the washroom that didn't make any sense. Besides, he had told me that his parents were gone for the weekend. When I brought that up to him, he slowly turned and gave me a really creepy look. A few seconds later, he turned back to the TV without saying a word. I was really shaken now and was starting to feel very scared. Kyle had never acted like this before. I was honestly shitting bricks. Plus, I literally had to shit since I was so petrified. I asked Kyle where the washroom was and he told me it was downstairs and to the right. He never once took his eyes away from the TV while he spoke. I got up and walked out of the room pretty quickly. I was happy for an excuse to get away from Kyle for a moment. When I got to the stairs, I started to feel even more afraid for some reason. My breaths were coming out very shallow and my legs didn't want to work right. It was like I was walking through tar. Every step felt difficult. I slowly forced myself to go down the stairs. And as I did so, I started to hear the skibbity sounds again. They seemed to intensify the further downstairs I went. It sounded like they were coming from inside the bathroom. Just when I was considering leaving and going back home, I suddenly had the thought that this was most likely all an elaborate prank that Josh and Kyle were pulling on me. Josh had to be the one downstairs making the noises. It all made perfect sense. I was going to open that door and find Josh laughing his ass off on the other side. I felt relieved and opened the door to the bathroom to tell Josh off. But I 
didn't find Josh inside. <gasps> Instead, I saw something much worse. A super creepy head was sticking out of the toilet with a really long neck. <laughs> it was twisting around jerkily and saying skibbity over and over again. I stood there frozen until it suddenly turned toward me and started yelling stuff at me. It looked like it was trying to break out of the toilet and come after me. I ran back upstairs and got the hell out of that house as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I was all the way back home. After that night, I dropped out of school and never contacted Josh or Kyle again. I have no idea whatever became of Josh. I think Kyle and his dad might have did something to him, but I never heard if he was alive or dead. I swear that what I saw in that bathroom had to have been some sort of demon. There was no way in hell that a person could stick their head out of a toilet like that, let alone have their body inside of one. I can't say for sure though. For all I know, Kyle and his dad were psychos who lured students to their house so that they could pull sick pranks on them. I'm still conflicted. I really think that it may have been something supernatural, after all. I saw it with my own eyes. It couldn't have been human. On darker nights, I can sometimes still hear someone saying skibbity in the distance. And I still find myself scared to use a toilet every now and then. SKIBBITY! <laughs> I was halfway home on the bus when I had to get off at a random stop to find a toilet. My stomach hurt so bad it felt like I was about to explode, so it was definitely an emergency. Unfortunately, a lot of the bus route went through some pretty sketchy parts of town. That was just how seriously I needed to find a toilet. I figured if anybody tried to have a problem with me, I could just let it rip and they'd be too grossed out to dig through my pockets. The only place that was still open in the area immediately around the bus stop was a dingy fast food joint, but I didn't have a choice. I hurried inside and rushed right to the bathroom, which was a huge disappointment. The light switch didn't even work and the only light to see was coming from a flickering street light through a small window. Plus, there were only two stalls and a urinal with a garbage bag over it, and just as I feared I wasn't alone. It sounded like a crazy person had locked themselves inside one of the stalls and was chanting in tongues, just saying the same nonsense word over and over again. Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity. Whatever that means in crazy talk. I was hoping that nobody would be present for what I was about to go through, but I didn't care enough for it to stop me. Unfortunately, when I opened the stall with nobody in it, I was so disgusted by what I saw that I almost threw up. Somebody had managed to coat just about every inch of the toilet with their feces, inside and out, and it smelled like a rotting corpse. Even in my most desperate hour, I would rather poop in my own pants than touch that mess even with three layers of gloves on, let alone my bare butt cheeks. And hovering over it was not an option because I didn't want any of the splashback from that toilet to have a chance of touching me. That left me with only one other option, to ask whatever wacko nut job was in the other stall to do their chanting somewhere else so I could use the toilet. I knocked it first, then realized the door wasn't even locked. Before I opened the door all the way, I tried to warn them. There was no response, so I slowly pushed open the door. Strangely, the chanting stopped right as I did that, and there was actually nobody inside the stall. I didn't question this at all and quickly pulled down my pants and sat down. As soon as I relinquished my grip, I realized just how much of a battle I was in for. The turd didn't move an inch. It got stuck. I tried to push it out, but it just wasn't budging. The longest, girthiest log of my life was trapped inside of me, and every time I pushed, I only caused myself more pain. Then out of nowhere, I felt a sharp pain on my cheeks. I jumped up and looked down at the toilet bowl. There was no crap in it, but it was covered in blood. My butt cheeks were bleeding somehow like I sat down on a pile of broken glass. I was confused and stunned, but I still had to go no matter what. It wasn't optimal, but I knew I had to squat and hover over the toilet and drop the load from the altitude. As I hovered there and pushed with all my might, I contemplated my entire life. What did everything amount to if it all led me here? Struggling in a dark, filthy, fast food bathroom with bloody butt cheeks and a lifetime's worth of constipated crap trying to evacuate from me all at once. I hadn't even made any progress. I tried pushing, squeezing, breathing, shaking, but none of it worked. I started to worry that I would be stuck like that for the rest of my life, or I'd have to get surgery to remove this god-awful blockage from my intestines. I thought maybe I'd have a brain aneurysm burst from all the straining and be put out of my misery, but no, I was just there. That was my life now. Suddenly. 
I felt another sharp pain latch onto me and yank me back down to the toilet seat. Yeah! Skibbity, skibbity, skibbity. Dub, dub, dub. Yes! I tried to get off the toilet, but something in there was pulling me down so I couldn't get up. There was nothing for me to grab onto to fight against it either. Then it started chewing through my flesh, biting and taking chunks out of me, then going for another. Yeah! Somebody help me! Please, God, please! Not like this! Not like this! No matter how hard I fought back, it was useless. Whatever this was, it had me trapped there. But it wasn't just that. As it bit off pieces of me, it pulled me down into the bowl. First it was just my butt, but then it sucked in my whole body, and only my arms and legs were still outside. I was being crushed and devoured by some kind of toilet beam, and by then I couldn't even call for help. I couldn't even breathe. I knew there was no hope for me anymore, so I just accepted it. At least I wouldn't have to take that impossible crap anymore, and whatever ate me would get a whole mouthful of that too. Sooner or later, I was gone. Yes, yes, give me the bubble, the name, name, give me the bubble, the name, name.